Hi, uh, welcome to the Center for Computing History. My name is Anjali and today we are going to look at a device called the microbit um, and learn how to program it. Now, what is a microbit? Um, this is what it looks like. Um, a microbit is a pocket-sized codable computer that was launched um, in the UK about five years ago. Um, and the whole idea was behind it was to teach young people um, how to connect and control physical objects uh, using code in a simple, fun way. To do this, microbit has a number of cool things included. The front has a bunch of LEDs. There are 25 LEDs, so an LED screen, and each of these LEDs can be individually controlled using code, which means you can flash messages on it, um, you can show icons on it, etc. You also have two push buttons, push button A and push button B, and these can be used to receive information to receive input. So say for example you're playing a game, you can use, you can say using your code that when I push button A, start the game. So you basically can control things using these push buttons. Now on the back of the micro bit, you've got a bunch of things. I'm going to talk about each of them uh, one at a time. So right at the bottom we have the accelerometer right there. And what an accelerometer is, it is that it detects movement. So if you shake the micro bit, if you tilt it, if you let it fall, it detects that movement. And using code, you can capture the movement and then ask the micro bit to do something, to respond to that movement. You also have a very handy compass, which means you can take your micro bit out for walks. So if your program says, um, I'm taking the micro bit out for a walk, show me the direction. So you can decipher maps, you can see which direction you're going in, etc. It's a very handy uh, tool. Um, you also have right at the top, you've got a radio and Bluetooth antenna, which means you can communicate. So two micro bits can have a conversation. So you can send, for example, a secret message to your friend who has another micro bit. In addition to all these, you also have at the bottom an edge connector. So what you can do is you can add accessories to it. You can add more things to the micro bit. So you can add, for example, a buzzer. So say, for example, I am making a biscuit tin alarm. So I want that, uh, that if somebody lifts the biscuit tin to steal my biscuits, uh, a buzzer will go off. So you can do that. You can connect a buzzer to the bottom, to the uh, one of the edge connector pins. So it's a bunch of pins at the bottom. That's what you have on the edge connector. You can control, say, for example, you can connect a motor. So you can control a buggy. So you can do all sorts of things um, in addition to the already present devices on this micro bit. Now, how does this all happen? What makes the magic happen? It's the chip. On the back, you should be able to see it says processor, which is the brains of this computer. So all the instructions that you give to the micro bit are decoded here. And then it lets you control the different, um, different tools on the micro bit. Now, pretty much useless if you can't power it. Also, how do I code it? How do I put this code that I've been talking about onto this micro bit. So to do that, you have a USB connector right on the top, right here. And you can connect this to a, a, a computer like your laptop or your, say for example, an iPad, etc. You can do all the coding on your computer and then transfer the code onto the micro bit by connecting the USB cable to the micro bit and the laptop. So the communication happens through the USB port. Now, once I have transferred the code, I don't want to be sitting uh, next to my laptop all the time. 
what I can do is I can unplug the USB cable and the microbit comes with a battery pack and I can plug the battery pack in here. So that's your battery connector. You can see that better on the, um, on the slide that I have here. So that's your battery socket and you can carry it around. It becomes a mobile device. So that was a bit about the device we are going to use. So in today's um, session, I'm going to talk you through for exercises, for examples, uh, very simple ones, just so that you can get familiar with the device. Now, if you don't have a micro bit, that is not a problem. I will show you what we are going to use um, to code and to uh, see the result. Now, all the micro bit coding happens online. The website that we use is called makecode.microbit.org. So if you have used this before, you would probably see a bunch of projects. Otherwise, it opens up like this. Now, what you do is when you click on the makecode.microbit, when you go to that website, you click on this new project um, button and it asks you to give your project a name. Now, as I said before, we're going to do four different exercises. The first one is we are going to say hello to the microbit and we're going to get it to display our name. It's like a name badge, so I can carry it around. I can walk around with the microbit pinned to my um, top and people can see my name. So I'm going to call this program name badge. And it opens the workspace, um, the microbit workspace. Now, as you can see, we have a very handy simulator on the left hand side. And that is why I said you don't necessarily need a device. So all the four exercises that I'm going to talk about today can be, the results can be seen on the microbit. I will also show you the result on an actual microbit in case you have uh, one with you. You can use the online editor. I tend, I tend to use the online edit, editor a lot more. I prefer it. But very recently, Microbit has also come up with an offline app. So if you don't, um, if you don't have a good internet connection, you don't have to worry. You can download the offline app. And this is where you download it from. You scroll down on this page. And you click on I agree to these Microsoft software license terms and conditions. And as soon as you click on it, you can download. If you're using a Windows machine, you can download uh, the MakeCode app for Windows or you can download the MakeCode app for the Mac operating system. So if you're using an Apple machine. So once you have downloaded the app, now I've downloaded the app onto my machine. It looks exactly like that make code page. Um, it does exactly the same thing. So if, if you'd like to use it, you can go ahead and use that. For the session, however, I'll be sticking to the online version of make code. Okay. So let's create a name badge. Now, as you can see, um, just Go, I'm just going to quickly tell you what the different parts of the make code workspace are. I've already talked about the simulator. You've got a bunch of controls under the simulator, which I will talk about once we have written our program. Um, this here is your block command tab. So you've got all your block instructions. And if you click on any one of the instructions, so say, for example, I click on the first one, basic, you can see all the other instruction tabs. It's just like Scratch. So each of these tabs have a bunch of instructions under them. As I said before, this central area is your workspace. This is where you put type in the name of your program. And once you've finished typing it in, once you have tested it on the simulator, we download the code onto the machine so that we can transfer it to the actual device. And I will talk, through, talk you through it 
uh, once we have written our program. Okay. Um, as you can see on the workspace, you have two tabs. You have the on start tab and you have the forever tab. Now, these are control blocks. So these are two control instructions. Again, like Scratch, uh, where you had the when green flag clicked and the forever block. Um, we will look at each of them and you can different situations, different programs will need you to use different control blocks. So I will show you um, the program using the on start block as well as using the forever block. Okay, let's start with the on start block. So to get our name flashing, scrolling across the screen, we click on basic and then we drag the show string block and we clip it in the on start block. As I said, it's very like scratch. It is block coding. So it is very much like scratch. Now, as soon as I attach the show string on the on start, you probably saw a quick scroll. Now, because the show string says hello, it quickly scrolled hello. Now, because it's on the on start, um, it'll scroll as soon as the program started. So I'm going to start the program again. And that's where these controls at the bottom of the simulator come handy. So you can see the button here which says restart the simulator. So I'm going to click on that and you can see hello scrolling across the screen. Now I don't want hello. I've said hello. I want my name. So I'm going to click on this white space where it says hello in the workspace and I'm going to change that to my name, Anjali. Click outside and instantly you can see Anjali scrolling across the microbit screen. To see it again, you press the restart button and it scrolls again. So every time you want to see the text scrolling, you have to constantly press the restart button. Might get a bit annoying. That's where the forever block comes into play. So I'm going to drag the show string and I'm going to drop it within the forever block. And now what? look what happens. It scrolls my name and then scrolls it again. And it keeps scrolling it until I press the stop button where it says stop the simulator. And then, there you go. It stops the simulator. If you want to restart the simulator, you press the play button, start the simulator button again, and it restarts the simulator. So that's your name badge. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to stick with... Um, I'm going to move the show string back to on start. We will look at the forever block again. But for now, I'm just going to move the show string back to on start. And I'll show you how to download this code onto the actual microbit device in case you have one. If you don't, as I said, it is not a problem. We can happily work on the four exercises that I'm going to show you today using the simulator. Okay. So, if I want to download it onto the actual device, that's where this download button comes into play. So you click on download and it downloads it onto your, so you can see this. Um, so it downloads it onto your download folder on your computer. So I'm going to click on the file explorer and then go into downloads. And there you have it, your micro, microbit name badge dot hex. You can see that the, the file has been downloaded with the name that you have given, name badge. It has prefixed the name of the file with the microbit, the word microbit. And at the end of it, it says dot hex. Now, those are the type of files that the microbit uh, the make code uh, app will also download. So I should be able to open this online on the online editor as well as 
on my make code app now a hex file it's a bit complicated but a hex file is a bunch of instructions it's a bunch of zeros and ones we can't understand it it's not english but it is something a computer can understand it's computer language okay so we don't have to worry about it all we need to do is move this hex file onto this micro bit now to do that when you buy a micro bit you will get the device you will get a usb cable and you will get a battery pack okay so we are going to plug the device now in so i connect the usb cable to my laptop the other end goes into the micro bit um it will go on in only one way so you don't have to worry about oh am i putting this right it'll only go in one way as soon as it goes in you'll see that light flashing at the back and on your laptops you should have uh, another window pop up which is your micro bit window but we don't we don't want that we can close it um now we are going to move this hex file on to the micro bit device so i'm going to click on that just a single click and click and drag as you can see to the on the left hand side you should be able to see all your drives it it should say micro bit and just drop it it's a drag and drop and when that is happening you can see that this light is flashing it is actually called flashing the device because the memory inside the micro bit is what is known as flash memory so when you transfer code between your computer and the micro bit you are actually it's called flashing the device now what happens with the micro bit is that it can store at any one point in time one program so at this moment i have my name badge um i don't know if you saw that i will click on the reset button so that you can see it so the reset button at the back because it's an on start my name is now scrolling across the screen finished i press the reset button again and it scrolls again now as i was saying at any one point in time this micro bit can have one program on it at the moment it has name badge on it if i change the program or i want to download another program the name badge program gets forgotten wiped out and the new program gets written instead of it so at any one point in time micro bit can have one program running okay so one more time reset button and you can see the name scrolling across so there you go that's your name badge and we have said hello to the micro bit okay so the next program we are going to create is an addition we are going to add on to this program however i will show you how to create a new program a new project so i'm going to leave the name badge on here and then you can see this home button on the top left hand corner of the screen you click on the home button and you are back on to the projects page so for a new project you click on new project and it asks you for a name The second example that I'm going to talk uh, to you about is a superpower symbol. We are super people, so we should also have a superpower symbol. Superman has one, Wonder Woman has one, so we should have one as well. So I'm going to call this program Superpower Symbol. Or just Super Power. Right? And then you click on the create button or you can press enter on your keyboard. and it creates a brand new program as you see every time you create a new project you'll still have the on start and forever blocks so these are control blocks you can get rid of them if you don't want them but they always appear by default they come on the screen so what i'm going to do in this exercise is i'll have the name my name scrolling you can have obviously have your name scrolling on the micro bit device so i'll have the my name scrolling on the micro bit device and then i'm going to flash a superpower symbol on the screen now my superpower symbol is the first letter of my name a so that's what we're going to do so 
under the on start block as we did before we click on basic and then we drag the show string you did this in the name badge exercise exactly the same thing and change the hello to Anjali now in the forever block this time I'm going to have the superpower symbol flash now to have the superpower symbol on the micro bit I will be controlling each LED on the LED screen now LEDs are what we call output devices so in electronics LEDs are known as output devices because they show you a result the computer the processor on the back of the micro bit can switch an LED on or off so it can show you a result by saying ah I've been switched on or I've been switched off so that's what we are going to do in the program so to get the LED screen uh, on the workspace you again click on basic and you can see this show LEDs instruction so I'm going to drag that this time I'm going to drop it in the forever block at the moment the LED screen is blank so it, the simulator would scroll my name and then nothing so let's now create the superpower symbol as I said mine is the first letter of my name which is an A so now if you look at the simulator it scrolls my name and then displays the symbol displays the letter A every time you make a change to your program the microbit simulator gets reset so I can show you that so say for example I make this small change I have switched on two LEDs uh, on the LED screen two more LEDs on the LED screen and it scrolled my name again and then finished with displaying the symbol this is not quite what I wanted I want that symbol to flash on and off continuously so we're going to add to this now what I want to do um, every time you write a program you need to think it through what do I want that program to do so what I would like my program to do is show the symbol then wait for maybe a second clear the screen and then sh clear the screen for another second and then show the symbol again and then keep doing this over and over again to do that I need a pause statement so I need a wait statement like you have wait in scratch in micro bit you have the pause statement and you can find the pause statement in the basic instruction tab so I click on basic and if you scroll down you can see the pause instruction I drag that and drop it under the LED screen under the show LEDs block in the workspace at the moment it says pause ms followed by a hundred now that ms stands for millisecond which means one thousandth of a second you've all done fractions at school um, and you all know when you measure length you can measure length in meters centimeters millimeters so it's exactly the same thing with time so in this case it is millisecond so at the moment it says for 100 milliseconds show that symbol a I want it for a second which means I need to multiply that millisecond by thousand which will give me one second now I don't need to do the multiplication here because the pause provides that little arrow next to the hundred if you click on that you'll see a bunch of options and one of the options is one second so I'm just going to click on that so that was a little bit of maths for you you can do that thousand times one by thousand calculate what does that give you should give you one second okay so I've got my show LEDs and then I've got pause now I add the clear screen block again I go to the basic instruction tab and you can see the clear screen instruction here I drag that and drop it under the pause let's see what that does to our simulator 
So my name scrolls because it's under the on start. The superpower symbol flashes, waits for, oh, that was quick. It's a very, very quick flicker. It's supposed to display for one second, clear the screen, and then display it again. So the clear screen should also happen for one second, which means I need another pause block under the clear screen instruction. So I go to basic again. I drag pause and drop it under the clear screen. Change the 100 to one second. And let's see what that does. Name scrolls. And there's my superpower symbol flashing on and off every second. There you go. That's your program. That's your superpower symbol program. Now, again, as I said for the previous, previous one, simulator works, everything's okay. But because I have a device, I'm going to download the program onto the device so that I can show you what it looks like here. So I'm going to click on the download button as I did before. It'll tell me that it's downloading. Then I go to the file explorer, go to the downloads folder on your computer. And you can now see it has the superpower.hex file on it. So I'm going to drag that and drop it onto the microwave. It's flashing. You can see that light flickering. So it's transferring it onto the memory. And look, name scrolling. And there you go. That's your superpower symbol. I'm going to unplug that. Because what's the point if I have a superpower symbol and I'm connected to the laptop all the time? I want to be walking around with it. So I plug the battery back. Again, the battery goes in one way. And there's your mobile superpower badge. You can walk around and impress your friends with it. So that's our second exercise. Right, in the third exercise, um, we are going to look at what are known as input devices. So the previous um, program looked at output devices, looked at LEDs. Input devices, on the other hand, are devices that send information to the computer so that the computer can respond. One such device is a push button. So the push buttons on the micro bit can, are examples of input devices. So in this program, what we are going to do is when you push a button, that micro bit is going to show you something. So I'm going to go back to the home page so that I can open a new project. So I click on home and then click on new project. This time, I'm going to call this a mood badge, which means I can walk around the room. When I press button A, I want a smiley face to be shown on the micro bit. When I press button B, I want a sad face to be shown on the micro bit. So I'm going to call this program a mood badge. So you type that in and you click on create as you did before. Again, on start and forever are still on the workspace. Now this time round, as I said, we are going to look at the input side of things. Now if you look at the command block, you can see an input instruction tab. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to click on input. And the first one, the first instruction is on button A pressed. So I'm going to drag that and drop it onto the workspace. Now, I don't need the on start and forever. So I can just leave it there on the workspace or I can get rid of it by dragging and dropping it onto the left. You don't have to. We can just leave it on there. Nothing's going to um, happen to the program. So now I've got on button A pressed. 
I need on button B pressed as well. We do exactly the same thing. You click on input. Ah, you don't have an on button B pressed. Now what you do is you drag another on button A pressed onto the workspace. Now when you do that, you'll see that it is shaded. That just means you already have an on button A press. You need to change that A to something else. Now, as I said before, we can change that A to a B. I want both the buttons to respond. So if you click on the arrow that's next to A, you can choose B. So now you have on button A pressed and on button B pressed instructions on your workspace. Now what I want to do is when I press button A, I want a smiley face to come up. So to get a smiley face, I click again on basic. Now we've looked at show string, we've looked at show LEDs. Another tab, another instruction that is available under the basic uh, command block is the show icon. So Microbit, the make code, has a bunch of icons already stored in there. So we can just use an icon or you can create your own smiley face. I like using the icon. So I'm going to drag the show icon and drop it within the on button A pressed block. I'm going to do the same thing with the on button B. So click again on basic and drag another show icon and put it within the on button B pressed block. Now at the moment it shows the heart icon. Also notice nothing's happening on the simulator because there hasn't been an input. We haven't pressed those buttons to trigger the micro bit to do something. I'm going to change the heart icon under the on button A pressed to a smiley face. Now if you click on the arrow next to the heart, you'll see a bunch of icons. Look at all the icons that are available. Right at the top, you have the smiley face. I'm going to choose that. Under the on button B pressed, instead of the heart icon, I want a sad face. There you have it. So when you press button A, you should see smiley. When you press button B, you should see sad. So let's try and do that. So on the simulator, press button A. Ta-da! You've got a smiley face. Press button B. You've got a sad face. There's your mood badge. You can add on to this. There is another one that, um, there's another input that you can do while you're doing button A, button B. You can add button A and B together. So when you press button A and B together, you can show something, something else. So let's go back to the input and drag again one more of the on button A pressed blocks. Arrow next to button A, can you see it says A plus B. So we select that. This rhyme round, um, maybe we show, um, what shall we show? I'm going to drag another show icon. So should we show an angry face? Maybe we'll show an angry face. Okay. So basically what you have, what you have here is when you press button A, you have a smiley face. You're basically saying, yeah, I'm okay. You can come and talk to me. I'm in a good mood. When I press button B, I'm not in a very good mood. I've got a sad face. I've got a sad smiley there. So I'm, going to say, I'm saying, please do not talk to me. Please do not disturb. But if somebody keeps pestering you, you press button A and B and you're really annoyed now. Go away. Don't talk to me. That's basically what this program does. Okay, let's now, um, oh, let's just check the simulator very, very quickly. So button A pressed, smiley. Button B pressed, sad. Button A, B pressed, ooh, angry face. Let's download this onto the micro bit. So I click on download again. Connect the micro bit to my computer. Go to the downloads folder. And 
there you have it. You have your moodbadge.hex file. Drag that and drop it onto the micro bit. It's flashing. And it's still transferring, it's still flashing. Nothing on the screen, obviously, because I have not pressed any button. So button A, smiley, happy to talk to you. Button B, sad, not in a mood to talk. Somebody still wants to talk to you. You go button A and B together. I'm really not in a mood to talk. I told you. Angry face. There you go. That's your mood badge. You can add on to this. So this was just showing the input. You can combine this with your superpower name badge programs and have a slightly bigger program. So you can do all sorts of things. So you can have an output and an input working together. Okay. As the final exercise, we are going to look at the accelerometer on the micro bit. Um, as I said right at the start, the accelerometer detects movement. An accelerometer is what you have on your phones and on your tablets, which basically tells you whether the screen is the right way up. So every time you move the phone, it'll say, oh, something's happened, something's changed. So change the orientation of the screen so that it is the right way up. So the idea uh, behind the exercise is when I shake the micro bit, it will display a random number between one and six, kind of like a dice. So we're going to create a micro bit dice. So going back, uh, click on the home screen, come back to the list of projects, click on new project, and I'm going to call this dice. Click on create. Now accelerometer is a kind of a sensor. Sensor is also an example of an input device, just like a push button, because it senses things, something has happened. And it sends that sensed information to the processor and then the process, processor can respond accordingly based on what we have fed it using our code. So we are going to um, again look at the input block. I'm going to leave the on start and forever blocks here or you can get rid of them. It's entirely up to you. So I'm going to leave them on the screen. So I click on input again and you can see the on shake instruction. That's what we want this time. So I'm going to drag the on shake instruction and I'm going to drop it onto the workspace. Now, as I said before, when I shake the micro bit, I want it to show a number, which means I need a show number instruction. So anything to do with showing things is stored under basic. Like we had show string, we had show LEDs, we had show icon. We can now use the show number. So I'm going to drag that and drop it under shake. But what number did we say we wanted to show? We wanted to show a random number. But before we go to that, let's see if this actually works. So at the moment, it says on shake show number zero. Again, the simulator doesn't do anything yet because you haven't you haven't shaken it. You haven't given it the input trigger. So I'm going to click on the shake button. There you go. As soon as you click on the shake button or you shake the micro bit, you see the number zero appearing. Now, if I want another number appearing, um, I click on that zero and I change it to say four. Again, at the start, nothing. You shake the micro bit. You press on that shake button, it comes up with the number four. And that's not quite what a dice would do. Every time I want to change a number, I have to plug the micro bit in, change my program and reload it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to pick a random number. Now, picking random numbers is available under the math instruction block. So if you click on math, 
you will see the pick random 0 to 10 instruction. So I'm going to drag that and look what it has. It's, now this is slightly different from all the other blocks we've looked at. It's got a red button on the left hand side of it. And what that red button does is as soon as you approach that space where that number is, can you see that connection, that yellow line between the two? Look, as soon as you approach it, that yellow line appears, which means this particular instruction can fit onto that space. So I'm just going to drop it and there you go. It just clicks right into place. Now, because it's a dice that we are creating, we wanted to pick a random number between 1 and 6. At the moment, my random number picking is happening between 0 and 10. So I'm going to change that. So I'm going to click on 0 and I'm going to change that to 1. Then I'm going to click on 10 and I'm going to change that to 6. Let's see if that works. So I go, press the shake button, I get a number 5. I press the shake button again, I get number three. Shake button again, I get the number six. There you go, you have your dice. Pretty simple, we have not used too many instructions in creating any of these programs. Um, again, I've used only one on shake and then the show number instruction and you've got a very functional thing. You can play board games. You're revolutionizing the way you play board games. Let's actually transfer it onto this and I'll show you. There's no shake button on the micro bit. You have to actually shake it. So as before, we're going to download the program. Go to the downloads folder and you can see dice.hex available. You drag it and you drop it onto the micro bit. It's flashing, you can see it flashing, it's still transferring and I'm going to unplug this, connect the battery because that's how you're going to play board games. You can attach the battery pack either with Velcro or you can just tie a rubber band around it. So you can just tie a rubber band and there you go. So when I now shake the micro bit, I'm giving it a trigger, shows you the number three. Shake it again, shows you number six. Shake it again, number two. There you go, an electronic dice. So there you go. That was a brief introduction to the micro bit. As you saw, we didn't have very complicated code. It was one, two instructions um, at a time. Um, and you could create something really clever out of it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session. We Please do uh, subscribe uh, to our channel. We've got a lot more uh, learning resources on our channel and other videos which, talks about, uh, which talk about our collection. Um, and remember to hit the bell um, so that you are notified when there are other videos uh, uploaded to the channel. We are planning to do more stuff. Um, until then, thanks for watching.